good place to just spend one minute with your hands and just lift it up to heaven don't clap it's just a good place to speak to the Lord just a good place to speak to him I see that he's speaking to a few people right now it's a good place to hear there's a sweet spirit of the Lord here Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, give Him glory, give Him glory, give Him praise, give Him praise. He's here, He's here. We give Him glory, we give Him praise. We give him praise. Lifting every burden, removing every yoke. Oh, we give you praise. We give you praise. Praise. <laughs> Parasco talada bas teke to limbro do coste ke de limbro coste Zeke ata brato steke te limbro to steke te limbro coste ha We give you praise we give you praise we give you praise we give you praise Most precious most glorious the ancient of days Almighty Victorious, thy great name be praised. Most precious, most precious, most glorious, the ancient of days, almighty, victorious, thy great your presence here this afternoon Lord we praise you Lord thank you for the feast of hard things going on thank you Jesus we give you glory in Jesus most precious name we worship Amen Hallelujah. Please be seated. Thank you, Brooks. Let's celebrate the Brooks this morning. Amen. So we'll go straight into the second session. Because the last session will be a lot of fire. So let's take a very cool session. So it will be my session. Glory to God. I mean, I must, I must commend us since two days ago. Our hunger is deeply strong. It's deeply strong. So I want to speak to us in the next few minutes to come from a dimension that has probably not come into this so that we can have a balance to feel things because when we talk about taking territories there are spiritual principles for taking territories there are strategies for taking territories the strategies for taking territories there are systems for taking territories very important very important In Genesis 1 26, two powerful words were used by God. That God created man in his own image. Creation was by image. In Genesis 2 verse 5 to 6, God formed man. That place he said God formed man was when, men, when man for the first time had nostrils, had eyes, had ears. So if you read that scripture, you will see it there that that was the first time 
that man had those things so when god created man he was created in his image and what's the image of god god is a spirit so he created him a spirit what i call the hybridity of god and the creation of a man is a spiritual construct i want to do that as an introduction because i want to talk about redefining culture so as to take territories the word image is from three beautiful words image means phantom image means shade an image means illusion the word phantom there shade illusion talks about a spirit without a body so when god created man he was a spirit illusion there is except there's another way to see what god created you can't see it like if you moved into the place where god just finished creation you're asking what did he create you can't find it which is why it's difficult for a lot of people to believe in spiritual things because when they tell you the journey of faith is you see it and you believe it and you're asking yourself if you're in the flesh where exactly is at this things say oh my tomorrow will be great god has healed me god has done something great that is beautiful that's powerful but where is it you can't see it you must understand that when we were created we we're created spirit beings god never created a body he never created a body the only thing God created was a spirit. And that's why if you understand this principle, it will help you to understand what faith is. How to trust God. How to believe God. How to get things done with God. Because your creation is out of phantom, illusion, and shade. How do you get that confidence that you got out of your house and you say, wow, God is going to do something great today and you can't see it. It talks about the power of spiritual construct. Did you notice it was after the fall of man that man knew that he was naked? Because God never created body. So Adam never knew that he was naked. Because he was created a spirit being. He was a spirit. Then if you now go to Genesis 2 and verse 7. Now this man that was created. That you can't even see. That creation in Genesis 1, 26 to 8. You can't see. If you go, if you were there. Say God, what did you just create? God will say, look at it. But you can't see it. It's a phantom. It's a shade. It's an illusion. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground. Do you see this now? Now there's now something happening to the man that was created. Are you with me? So, so it means that it's not from the ground that man was created and God formed man of the dust. So, man had been. There was now a process called formation going on. So, who is man? His spirit. And because by the law of territory, man cannot govern the earth except there is a body that he has. So, God had to move further in this place to say, that we must have what is called the formation of man man must be formed for him to have legal rights to be able to govern this earth or else it's going to be a foul that's why god cannot come on the earth as a spirit and govern the earth he has to become a man to function here how do you know that jesus christ will return apart from the theories that you were taught in the bible when he resurrected he resurrected bodily that was a foul on the earth 
you cannot go through that transportation with the body. So it means that he must return back to drop the body that he resurrected with. That's a proof that he's coming back. So, and the Lord God formed man out of the ground. When he formed him, see what uh, the elements that came out of him in Genesis 2, 7. You now see the Bible mentioned that, and God breathed into his nostrils. So, man had nostrils for the first time. So, he tells you this is when the organs came into the body. The spirit that was created never had nostrils, never had ears. You can't even see him. That was the man that God created. That explains the faith dimension of man. That you see this other dimension in his likeness. The word likeness means three things or four things. Number one, it means appearance. Number two, it means similitude. Number three, it means model. And number four, it means fashion. Body is the fashion of the spirit. Body is the fashion of the spirit. And if body is the fashion of the spirit, you the body was formed so it can become anything you want it to become. God created Lucifer. If you see how God created Lucifer, even as a man, you will be jealous of that creation. If not because Christ now lives in us, which is the hope of glory. That was just the only game out. But Lucifer was created by God. God created him. Who, who, who created Satan? Lucifer formed the formation of Satan. He now became Satan. He became a serpent in the Garden of Eden. He became this. He became that. The formation of Lucifer. So, like you now, you are not created a drug addict. But just find out that you are taking drugs. But the manga God created is a spirit. But by your formation, you are formed into other things. It tells you that by capacity, man has that right to form anything. You can wake up tomorrow and say the person is homosexual. It's a formation. It's not creation. You can become a lesbian and they'll tell you I'm a lesbian now. That's how God made me. No, no, no. That's not how God made you. You were created a spirit. We can't see you. But you formed to become that. You became a formation. So I'm doing that as an introduction to this. So if we understand this power of creation and formation, you will know that now, in the realm of formation, you will find out that a lot of things happen. A lot of things happen. And the devil is the God of formation. And God is the God of creation. I hope by now you know that God is not the, God is not the name of God. It's not a name. And I've taught it, God is an office. It's an office. There are people who bear the name God. There are angels that have the name God. It's just that he's the only one that has God before other names. Every other person, they will have God after their name. For example, you check the angels. One is Michael. The L is God. E-L. You have Michael. You have Gabriel, what we call Gabriel. Gab, then L. It's at the end. But he is the L at the beginning. So if he's that, whatever happens on the earth is in the hand of two things. God created the earth, like Apostle Selman said last night, when we saw it in the Bible, Genesis 24. God is the God of the earth, but he's not the God of this world. The devil is the God of this world. By right. It was not the fall of Adam that gave Satan the right to own the world. He owned it before, Sat before Adam came to combat. In fact, Adam was God's strategy to say, I want to remove this devil and he's passing his territory. He's not doing well. But God cannot kill the devil. If he does that, he ceases to be God. Have you not wondered why God can't kill a president of a nation that is not doing well? How come the book of Adam, can't they just wake up, all of them die? Those are just think, mere thinking. It does not happen. Systems don't operate like that. If God kills Satan, he ceases to be God. 
So the only thing God can do is to cooperate in the law of human form to ensure that he now becomes man so that he can function on the earth. And the child grew. God became man. The word became flesh. And the child grew. Then God's strategy was for Adam to be able to combat with Satan and take the rightful owner. But ladies and gentlemen, Adam tried his best. But the culture in the formation world was stronger than what he could do. It wasn't a cheap battle. Adam did all he could. Do you want to know the, the, the kind of advantages that Adam had that we never had? In the days of Adam, there's no reason for a conference like this. There's no reason to come to church on a Sunday morning. God and man meets every day. In fact, it was said that it was God that comes down to meet Adam. It's not man that goes to church. Church was coming to meet Adam. There was a culture on the earth that choked Adam. And that's where I want to go to. Now, culture is defined as a phenomenon that is transferred and expanded through social learning. Like I said, I'm not coming from the spiritual point of view. I just want to say some things to our intellectual mind. It's not something that is codified. It's not something that is written. It's not something that is ratified constitutionally or nationally or by a race or something. There's nothing like that. Most times they are unwritten. But you see a group of people begin to function as if there's something that coaches them together. Are we together? So from the word culture, you find the word cult. A group of people that do things together in a particular way. So for example now, if we all do the same thing together, we are a cult. So you will not think the word cult is a negative word. It depends on what you are doing. The output of what you are doing. It could be a cult. You see a group of people in a particular place, they behave in a particular way. That's like a cult. From the word culture, you also find the word cultivate. Which is to till. To make something become. God called Adam and God said to him, I've called you to cultivate the earth. And not the world. Because the world in itself is a complex place. It's like having this whole place as the earth. And this is a portion of the ground. It's called the world. And that's the one that the devil, Lucifer, when he was casted down. Are you with me? Before Adam was given birth to or was created, when he was casted down, he had his own place called the world. Don't think it was after Adam, that's when the devil was casted down. No, it was before Adam. Because when Adam was created, the devil was already here. It helps you to understand that the book of Job was written before Genesis chapter 1. Because the sons of men and the sons of the devil, they gather in a meeting together. So people interact, like I said, this is the devil. And God could say, devil, where are you coming from? Say, I'm fine. I'm just going to and fro the earth. God is good. So culture is something powerful. And I'm going somewhere. Then who are culture shapers? Because to change a culture, you must understand what is called the base composition of what is there. Because culture is a lot of threads of rules and traditions of men that has been bound, legally bound, to enforce people to come into compliance. You just must comply. Anybody who wants to claim to be a culture shaper must be somebody you are fighting a thread of traditions and rules that have been for many years and people have complied to it so for example if you rise in a generation to say you want to be a culture shaper one of the things that you must note that will happen to you is that you must be hated because there's a compliance rule everywhere and everybody must function according to that thing that when somebody says that I don't want to obey this rule, then you are hated. You are a disruptor. 
you are now somebody that is not in the court. So what would the court do? The court will ostracize you and expose you because you are not part of us. But ladies and gentlemen, if I check through history and check men that have made it and God has used on the earth, there were people that stood out of a place and said, this cannot continue the way it used to be. One day, some years ago, I think 10 years ago, somebody looked at me and said to me, he was a church member. One day, he asked me, what's the vision of the church? I said, God sent us to take over. These men who would take over the world. And I listed what we are going to be doing, which is what we are still doing today. He looked at me and he said that Jesus is not in this agenda. And he walked out. When he walked, I mean, he told me this story when he came here last year. Yes, for a meeting. He said, sir, I used to be a member. I said, I never saw. He said, yes. And this person, you know, Went to start a job. I mean, a lot of stuff around it. You know, but he said that I'm in tears because I never saw what you saw. You know, I talk about my biological father a lot because I'm quite close to him before he went to be the Lord, be with the Lord last week or last two weeks. And my, my father looked at me and said to me that amongst all the, the children, you are not the one God called into ministry. He told me. He said, God didn't tell him that I'm called. So he said, every ministry idea in your heart, debunk it. Go back to ExxonMobil. And guess what? What was speaking was not God. Was the, was the voice of security. It was just the voice of security. That, that makes sense. So one of the things I could do was that I just looked at him and I said, okay, sir. And people must learn how to disobey honorably. You must learn, lock like my word, disobey, but honorably. For example, the Bible says that children obey your father, right? But it is where? In the Lord. In the Lord. So if you are not speaking in the Lord, I have the right to disobey you, but honorably. So I prostrated. And I said, thank you, sir. That prostration to him was that I have complied. Because every family have a measure of righteousness. That for you to be in a particular good book, there's a way you must behave. And if you notice second children, they are not like that. They are, they are disrupt. Am I, am, I correct? am I correct? They always disrupt. So, but you know that the first child cannot try what the second child is trying. There's a compliance around it. And they have planted some fear. It became a culture. That you'll be seeing the younger one do something else and they cannot correct him. But if it is you, it will not go for free. They have learned how to negotiate their ways as diplomats. In the community, they look at Martin Luther King. Huh. But let me even start from Michael Jackson. And they said that he's not supposed to do this. And they said he's the least person that can do it. Martin Luther King Jr. one day stood and went before the Roman Catholic Church. He opened the 95th thesis to them. In the Roman Catholic Church, nobody ever dared to do that on the earth. And he showed up before them. And guess what he told them? He said that we are not saved by the priest or by the Catholic sacrament, we are, we are saved by grace. The first man to utter that statement on the earth. And he was ostracized, pushed out. They did all kinds of things against him. But is that not what we enjoy today? That was what led into the Protestant movement. Please, you should always suspect that when there are rules and rules and rules and people are saying comply, 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 there must be a mindset that you must have as somebody that God is calling to take territory to say, where there are rules, I'm supposed to be the rule breaker. That's the only way you can imagine. I came to mobilize a generation and speak to a generation. 
Once you see that, start suspecting that this is a way that the devil has put things together to make you normal like other people. You should suspect it. How can Rosa Parks be seated in the bus and they said a white person enters and they said, please sit, stand up for a white person. And every black has been standing up. Rosa Parks said, I won't stand up. I won't stand up. I don't care whether it's white or black or yellow. I don't care. I got the seat. I won't stand up. Oh, they did all kinds of things with her. But everybody that sat down, who remembered them? See, you are trying to comply to be good. That's why you will not grow. You see, and I, I said it two months ago. There are some messages I'm not afraid to preach again. When Jesus called the 12, he was looking for culture disruptors. That was his idea. That's what he wanted to do. He wanted to change the world order. For example, go to Acts chapter 17 and verse 6. In Acts chapter 17 verse 6, the Bible said, the latter part, see what the Bible says? He said, these are men that turned the world upside down. The Bible says, when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers. Give me the NIV. Crying, these are men that turned the world upside down. Give me the NIV version. They turned the world upside down. See what the NIV says? These men who have caused trouble all over the world world have now come here those are people that follow jesus they call them cause trouble because see you see this gospel is not to conform this gospel is to confront it's to confront and so if you are going to confront if a place is cold you turn it hot when it's hot turn it cold just make sure it's not the same when you came that's what paul did all his life you see, if everywhere is calm and Paul will cause riot before going, how can everywhere be calm? How can everybody be the same? Everybody complying to the same thing. Guess what he will do? He will cause a riot. And he will run away from the city. Then he gets into a city where there's riot in Aripagos. He will calm them down. And he will preach like a sensible person to them. Just to let you know that we are not normal. The problem is that you are trying to be normal. The church is trying to comply. And we're trying to make sense. Listen to me. We must make spirit. We are created beings. We are not formed beings. Spirits don't have sense. So they can't reason. They can't reason. A disruptor is anyone who can interpret normal course of things. Synergize and change it. With the leading of God. I like what Dr. Miles Moreau of Blessed Memory said before he died. He said, leadership is the ability to find a rule worth breaking and break it. Miles Moreau. Leadership is the ability to find... See, I tell, see, let me tell you. It's just that some of you, you just don't know how... So, so, for example, if you want to be popular, let me tell you one thing to be popular. You can't become a church and be popular. See, just be crazy. Go in the center of a street. Pick firewood and pick matches. Carry the Bible of God. Get 10 people to do Instagram live for you and say, today I want to burn the Bible. You will, you will grow. You will grow. But just blow for the right thing. Now I'm telling you. you. You just have to think and say, ah, I can every, I can, I can everybody. Let me show you a scripture. Mark chapter 7 and verse 7 to 13. I'm already loved. I'm already chosen. I know who I am. I know who I am. I know what you've spoken. I know what you spoke again. I'm already loved. Already chosen, I know who I am. All right, so we have to, we have to. Mark chapter seven and seven. They worship me in vain, but their teachings are rules, but taught by men. That the teachings that are going on in the church 
is not necessarily the teaching that I, the Lord, wanted, but it is the teaching of man. You see, and let me tell you something. When you find a man who has gained mastery over a thing and he has gotten result, you are forced to comply that this is the model that works. And we need to be careful that we are not creating a model outside God because of result. There are many things that we have done as men, not because it is true or right, but because God's mercy blessed it. Don't turn it into a rule. It's not a rule. God blessed it. The mess, their prayers we prayed. That if you're not the person that I prayed this for 100 years and see 100 days, see how my life turned. Then you start praying that same thing. You didn't know that God saw the heart and that I know that actually if you knew better, you won't pray that prayer. But by my mercy, I will answer those prayers. Then by conformity, you will say, no, this is the only way to pray. I want to speak to your ingenuity as a person. Don't try to be like any other person. Verse 8. He said, there are rules of men. Rules that are taught by men. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to the traditions of men. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why many people have left our pews and they have left the churches. Because all that you hear them say is the man said, the man of God said. It is not always God said this, that's why I left. It is always the man. And he said to them, you have a fine way of setting aside the commands of God in order to observe your own traditions. To observe your own traditions. One day somebody walked up to me and he says that his wife is pregnant. And the church said they can't join him. I said, tell me the name of your pastor. He mentioned it. And I knew the daughter of that man was pregnant. Two of the daughters were pregnant before marriage. But they packaged them into a wedding that you saw in no vision. It was packaged. But they, they know. You have a fine way of setting aside the commands of God in order to observe your own tradition. Verse 10. Give me verse 10 first. My screen. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother. Anyone who causes his father or mother must be put to death. Moses said so. Verse 11. But you see that if a man says to his father or mother, Whatever help you might Otherwise, I've received from me is Kaban. That is a gift that is devoted for God. He was trying to clarify something there. Then verse 12. We'll stop at 13. Then you no longer let him do anything for his father or mother. Verse 13. The point of emphasis. Thus, you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down. And you do many things like that. Many things we do, even as pastors, is carry over of people's ignorance. That it is the day God opens your eyes, you say, how did I start doing this? It was the environment that compelled you to do it. The person received it by revelation. You, you got it by tradition. My pastor does feet washing. It's a revelation to him, not to me. If I do it, it's tradition. I may not get the same result like he gets. But guess what? When they do feet washing, cancer is healed. People, see, people's hair and bodies are lifted. They get result. But how oh, teeth you on me? I've not seen. Jesus says, "What I see, my Father. What is, I see, what He shows me. Not what He said. What He shows me. That's what I do. Because if you are not careful." You'll find out that we are raising the same set of people from generation to generation. Then there's no ingenuity in what we are doing. It means that we are all fools in one direction. But God is a hybrid God. Their worship, if I had the GW translation, it says their worship of me is pointless because their teachings are rules that are made by man. Let me tell you a bit about Jesus. And tell me if all the life of Jesus, he complied with a rule or he broke the rule. Number one, a rule in the Bible 
do not touch a leper. Matthew 8, 23. It's verse 2, I think. Verse 2 to 3. Now, this is the rule. When you see a leper, so it's an example of saying you, we found somebody who has Ebola. Or somebody who has COVID. The rule is do not go 10 minutes close to the person, number one. Number two is if it is a windy day, the person must be 200 meters far from you talking to you. You don't go near. Number three is that they have a camp. I mean, COVID gives you an idea. They have a camp where they are all isolated people that are there. Now, what do you think those men are suffering? People who have leprosy. What do you think they are suffering? It's not the real leprosy. The real torture is that they have been ostracized from human beings. So nobody talks to them, particularly nobody touches them. So it's been a while a leper has been touched. Emotionally, that does something for you. So scientifically, if you have not been touched as a man or as a woman in the space of two to two years to three years, your death rate increases. That no people pass you by and they don't touch you. And even whether it's to slap your head or slap your hand or anything, that they don't touch you for two to three years. How do you see buildings that nobody lived inside? And suddenly you find out that it's dying. It, it will lose beauty. You would have thought when I enter into the place, I'll just clean it and everything will be fine. You enter, you will be shocked that nobody has touched this thing. Jesus said, bring that man to me. I know your rules. You know Jesus didn't pray. The Bible says he touched him. And the man became healed. See, a man with leprosy came it was true. A man with leprosy came unto him, you know, and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can. So it's not that you cannot make me clean. It is willingness to touch me. If you are willing, you can. I'm not doubting your capacity, your ability, but you can. But if you are willing, then in verse 3, see what Jesus said. Jesus reached out his hand and did what? Touch the man. All he needed to do was touch him. Be clean. And immediately he was cured from leprosy. All he was looking for. That means anybody would have done that miracle before Jesus. Just touch him. I'll give you another example. That's Jesus. Mark chapter 7. Always obey ceremonial washing. Ceremonial washing means before you eat. You felt baptize your hand and wash your elbows. Till date, I don't understand what that rule means. Why would you fold, remove your, you have to remove your chop, then wash your whole hands, your armpit, and your elbow before you can eat? Washing of elbows before eating. Mark chapter 7 from verse 1. See what it says. And check out the people that have been coming to Jesus here. Two people. Pharisees and who? Huh? You see, far, you see Pharisees and you see people from Herod. So you see them in these stories. Now, this is Pharisee. The other one is Pharisee. The Pharisee and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus. Verse 2. See, the people gather around Jesus. Don't think they came to look for Jesus. They came for something else. So as I'm speaking, there are some people picking my words. I'm going to put it on Twitter. We're not all okay. We're not normal. And it's legal. It's okay. Say some of his disciples eating food with hands that were unclean. Is it not their stomach? If, if they have a personal hygiene problem, is that, not their, is that not to their detriment? How does that become a thing of the law? And he said, their hands are unwashed. And verse 3. I like Jesus. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they, take it, they put their hands in a ceremonial washing and hold into the traditions of the elders. Jesus said, what's my business with that? Go to verse 4. When they come to the marketplace, they don't even eat unless they wash their hands. They observe many other traditions such as washing of cups, washing of pitchers, washing of kettles, washing of this, washing of that. When somebody's hungry,
Number three, go back to Mark chapter two. There was a law by the Pharisees. Do not eat with sinners. Let me tell you why some of you are poor. Do not eat with sinners. Because I know that the kind of money you want to make is holy money. And the company you want to work is a holy company. Where your MD is a senior minister of the gospel and your COO and the technical officer, they are all Christians. That's where you want to work. So that the money that you hand is also called holy money. That's why you are poor. Because if you will take territories for God, the monies are not in the church. It's not in the church. You will sit down with men and women, broker a deal in a place that does not look like a church. Then you get your miracle out of the place and you come out of it. Thou preparest a table for me, but it's not outside them. So what is the rule? Contact without contamination. But there must be contact. There must be contact. You see, look, see, it's common sense. Go and check people who are not serving God. Go and see the result they are getting. You will understand that when they say that, go, go and go and understand how the snakes behave. Go and understand how these animals behave. That there's a sense that rules the world. Don't eat with sinners. Mark 2.15. Another one says, do heal on Sunday morning. Can you imagine that's a rule? That you came in sick, then you return back. Mark chapter 3 verse 1 to 6. Jesus wanted to heal a man. And I said, no, it's Sunday. It's Sunday. No, let's read Mark 3. Mark 3. Another time he went into the synagogue and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Verse 2. Some of them were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus. So they watched him closely. Why they came is to accuse. To see if he will heal on Sunday morning. And verse 3. Jesus said to them with a shriveled hand. Oh boy. Whether Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, any day is a day of miracle. Stand up in front of everyone. Verse 4. The thing scatter. Jesus asked them. Which is lawful on the Sabbath on Sunday. To do good or to do evil. To save life or to kill. But they remained silent. How do we know Jesus? Because he was a disruptor. There were many people in the days of Jesus. But because he disrupted, that's why we follow him. He did something different. He stood out. Standing out in the world or in this cosmos. Where everybody's pressure to conformity is difficult. But every time you can find yourself, that's how heroes are born. And you tell yourself, I don't think that I belong to this sect. I don't think I belong there. Guys, God raised, up to be, raised us to be culture shapers. In this country, we have seen the move of God from the days of our fathers. We've seen it from the days of the Azusa revival. And the days of Charles G. Finney. Coming down to the 80s. We've seen. Or read. About our fathers. The faith movement. The healing movement. We've seen what the power of God can do. At least everybody here can almost believe. That God can heal the sick. God can heal cancer. Do you believe it? God can heal somebody's organ, kidney, liver, condition, changes, and God heals, and God puts a new one. We've seen it. But I suspect a foul somewhere is a foul of limitation. How come that same power cannot enter into the systems and transform it? Why can't that power enter into the political sector? Why can't it enter into the educational sector? Why can't it enter into the entertainment? Is it not the same power of God? Did they say it's only to heal cancer? Power is power. Ability to do work anywhere. I know why, that's, why that is not happening. Because we are not engaging. We have said we are Christians. They are of the world. 
Ladies and gentlemen, when God created the heavens and the earth, there was no disparity between the secular and the spiritual. It was a rule of men that made us feel that this is secular and this is spiritual. Let me ask you a question, as holy as you are. The school you went to, is your proprietress an atheist, a Christian? Did you ask that, please, this school, so for example, you go to a school like Life Fort that produces the best work students in Nigeria currently, and you go there in the battle and say, sorry, but before my child comes here, I want to know whether the proprietor is a, is a Christian or is a Muslim. If he's an atheist, I don't want to come. You will look at the result producing work. You will see that religion, what you are talking about does not matter. It doesn't matter. If there's one doctor that can heal you of your crisis and you're on the sick bed, caught out to die. And I say, please excuse me. He said, white man, excuse me. Are you a believer in Jesus? You will get the answer at the other side. <laughs> or the Indian will not say, no, who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? He say, who is Jesus? You don't know Jesus? He say, who is he? Is he a footballer? And you would be negotiating your life on a deathbed. The textbooks you wrote or you read, did you say, ah, please, who is the writer? He said, if he's not a Christian, I'm not writing, I'm not written. Can you, can, you, can you pass? Ladies and gentlemen, you are a composition of what atheists have put into you, Muslims have put into you, Christians have put into evil religion that you don't know exist. They have contributed to your being. And you carry this in your brain to the exam hall so that you can go on and be promoted in life. Every time you see people give rules, you find them say things like, oh, I don't want you to make the same mistakes that I make. So you know that it's coming from the point of security. You hear things like, oh, I, 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 don't, I, I, want, I don't want to lose you, that's why I do this. Or you hear things like, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to protect you. Have you seen people who put children together and you, you script their lives for many years. And the children come out of your house for the first time. And they are alone. It's prison break. It's prison break. You see them mess up, make mistakes. They will come home and they have learned how to form by formation. In Genesis 2-7, they form. When they come home on holiday, they will speak your language, what you want to hear. Praise God, praise God. They will lead worship with you. They will praise God with you. Lift up holy hands. Just go on Twitter and see what they are saying and what they are doing. And, and you, but you, that's the, that's the righteousness that you want. When you see her, she came home as she's dropping her bag from school. She goes on her knees. You now look at it. How good and pleasant for to hear that my children are walking in the way of the Lord. And I'm going to meet your wife. God is helping us. <laughs> because they know that the only way they can be in your good books is to deceive you. And so they have, they have learned how to form. They have learned how to form. Let's talk about the prodigal son. The elder brother and the younger brother. By your judgment. Who was the good person? Elder or younger brother? Elder brother. By your judgment, who made it in life? Eh? The younger brother. You know, Jesus didn't say, Thou good servant, enter into the joy of your master. Thou good and faithful. Go and find out the meaning of that word. Faithful. Good servants don't just enter the joy of their master. They don't just enter. See the deal. Elder brother and younger brother grew up in the same way. There was a culture that they must comply to. So they told them, this is how this family runs. We don't want you to bring disrepute to this family. We don't want you to do this for this family. So they grew up together in the same house. The younger brother said, and you know, it's always the youngest, it's always the younger brother that disrupts, not the firstborn. So they were able to put the fear into that one. He was all pious. He will come back, he will go in. He will go out, he will come. It's the food they give him, they eat. They say no food. Glory to God. 
He cannot ask, why is there no food? The younger brother just woke up one day. He said, no. He said, I don't know who I, who I advised him. He just went to meet his father. Dad, I need my share of inheritance. If you're a Nigerian father, <laughs> when you are alive, you know, there was a king around this side that if he was the son, that's the heir, he was already 60 something and his father is still alive on the throne. He, he had to go and meet the father. Now, four years ago, when will I climb this throne? I didn't mention any time. When will I? And six months after, the father went to be <laughs> had to be somewhere. <laughs> When will I climb this throne? I'm 60 something. You are not. Ah. <laughs> ah. I need my share. So let's assume all the father had was 50%, 50%, and every other thing here. And he struggled with the father. But you know the rule is you don't take this before your father dies. You know, in the body of Christ, we believe it's when Elijah dies, that's when Elisha can rise. Who told you those two generations cannot operate together? It's Pastor Adeboye and Bishop Oyedeko not blazing the trail in this generation. He got his own 50% and he left. He remains another 50%. Who owns that one? elder brother but he doesn't know that he owns it he was still doing good boy he will go to work he will come back you see this one maybe drugs catch babes catch crooks finished everything he now started borrowing nobody to borrow again then started feeding with animals then the boy now said to himself but he came back to his mind I came from a home where they have better things. Even my the slaves, they eat better. I'm going back home. Ah, as he was coming back, do you know that the father saw him from afar? What is the father supposed to do? Just call the slaves and say, bring mankere, bring all kinds of things. You know, or from there he goes to the police station or something. He has squandered 50% of all he worked for in his life. So the man had half life. But the Bible says that as he saw him coming, he ran to meet him at the middle of the road. He didn't wait for him to come. He ran to meet. He looks like mercy goes to look for people who are disruptors. It sounds like that. And please, I am not saying this message is not to release the rebellious spirit in you. You may not find mercy. Because <laughs> you can forsake your own mercy. And the guy came in. They now killed the fattest ram. See, this guy has been in the house since. It's, uh, those one that's, that, those they wouldn't have moved around the street. That's what they. Now they called the fatted ram. They now started playing music. The house has been quiet. The elder brother was coming back from work. He said, Kilun Shele. I said, What is there? He said, What's happening? He said, Your brother has come. Is that why they are playing music? I have been in this house since. I never heard. Who told you not to get your own DJ? Number two, I've been in this house since. They never gave me the robe that he's wearing. Who told you not to ask for it? I've been in this house since. They never killed the fattest ram. It is the one that squandered that they have killed it for. I eat whatever they give me. Ladies and gentlemen, that's how some people are in this kingdom. They are there, behaving church. Come, go, speak Christianese, bless you, bless you. But they never get anything out of this kingdom. Then you see somebody who works. Those are the ones that claim I've been in this church 10 years. 
I've been here 15. Where were you when we started this church in Chopis? Then somebody comes two months after, catches the light of the word. God transformed his life. He said, no, it's fake. Elder brother. The elder brother syndrome. That's what's happening in the body of Christ. Elder brother syndrome. Go and ask for the music. Have you not read what the Bible says in Psalm 2? When it says, ask me for nations. Give me that scripture. Ask me for nations. And Psalm what? Psalm 2 verse what? Verse 7 to 8. Give me the message version. Psalm 2 verse 7 to 8. He said, let me tell you what God said next. You are my son. Today is your birthday. That's what God said. Today is your birthday. I'm not waiting for the day you were giving birth to him. In creation, every day is your birthday. Go to verse 8. This one will trip you more. See what that said in verse 8. What do you want? Name it. Nations as a present. Continent as a prize. Go to verse 9. Ha, ah, he said you command them all to dance before you. So you just don't sit in the kingdom and say I'm a good boy. God said command them. Name it. I have it. Name it. Command them to dance before you. And throw them out tomorrow as trash. And say that I'm not, I'm not interested in this nation again. You throw it out as trash. Say bring the next nation. Ladies and gentlemen, we are called to take over the world, take over nations, take over territories. We are called to expand the kingdom of God on the earth. We must be disruptors. Throw them away with trash. Is there a verse 10? You can command them to dance before you. you. can command them to dance before you. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. David wanted to fight a battle. And they gave him tradition and said, this is how to wear it to fight battle. David said, I have not proven it. I have not proven it. He removed it. This one I know is what I will use to fight. That's how David erupted in this generation. I have not proven it. But if they gave you that kind of thing, you will collect it like that. So they say we should wear it. They say we should wear it and Goliath will not kill you. When they not kill you, they say you don't know how to use it well. Ladies and gentlemen, we should live by the laws of God and not by the rules of men. That's where I'm going to. Rules are like computer programming languages. They program a generation. And you're not a silicon chip that they upgrade and upload. Today they will say they want a better version of you. This is how you should go. This is how you should be better. They say they want an upgrade of you. You're not a silicon chip. No. Laws help you to succeed. Rules help you to fail. You see this? Um, fly. What's his name? Ah, that fly that has a heavy body weight. In Yoruba, they call it is it Ali Bomb or something. Uh, what, what's it called in English? Bombobi. Bombobi. Uh, I don't know Yoruba. Ali bomb bomb. Uh, so, Bombobi. You know, if you see a Bombobi, by the law of aerodynamics, the body weight that he has cannot lift. It cannot lift. Then I ask myself, how come he's flying? He's not aware of the law of aerodynamics. It is what you are aware of. That's what limits you. The guy was never told that that kind of body weight cannot rise. So guess what? He decided to rise. Stop looking for the rules of men to justify what God wants you to do. It's better not to be aware of those rules and fly. In Christendom, we have all those rules. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt. Jesus said, love. Kill it with love. You know how many thousands of people gather to listen to Anthony Robbins every... You know, have you been on the Anthony Robbins session before? That he would talk and talk after a while. He would not call the place. He would not call something called meditation. And I, that guy does not know Jesus. 
And in the place of meditation, people start falling under the anointing. Are you, are you aware of that? That it's not only in this dimension as Christians that people fall under the anointing. Go and check it on online. Just take the meditation session of Anthony Robbins. He will pass like this. People will fall under the anointing. You think it's only Christians that do it. But you, if you now do it now, you say you're a man of God. Do my hand like this, they dance, flex like this, do like this, then dance, flex like this. And I hope you know that the demons that we cast out, well, we cast out in our churches is not the real demon. If you understand the formation of, the, of Lucifer and what he has become, you will know that one of the things he does is that he evades detection. That he will make you not see him so that you can go and look at another thing thinking that he is there. Ladies and gentlemen, we cast out those demons here. Nigeria has not risen. In America, they don't cast as much and America has transformed. Does that not tell you where the real devil is? The devil has moved into the intellectual spaces, taking over the world at different spheres. You see those two spirits called religious spirits and political spirit. You see them, Mark 8.15. I pick it up, I'm done. Mark 8.15. These two groups of people always come. My screen. Jesus warned. See what he says. Be very careful. Tell your neighbor, say, be very careful. Tap them very well, say, be very careful. Keep a sharp eye out for the contaminating yeast. What kind of eye? Sharp. Sharp. The Bible calls them contaminating yeast. What? Who are they? Of Pharisees and the followers of Herod. The Pharisees have a religious spirit. Find them. It's in the mindset. It's in the person. It's in the group. Deeply entrenched in them. You see, the followers of Herod, political spirit. It's in the perspective, it's in the person, and it's also in the group. That when you see this kind of people, you will understand why they do. And let me tell you the truth. People who have grown on the surface of the earth. Have you heard about the, is it the West, Westerners, or what, what, what's that family in the, in the UK that have grown, that, that they own almost every, the queen eats their bread? West, West, what was it? Eh? West what? Something, West, West something, West something. That the, the, the queen does not like that family, but he, she must eat their bread. That's what influence can do. That God will grow us to be great influencers on the earth. That You see, you don't need to like us as Christians, but you, just, our, you cannot deny our influence in your day-to-day -day life. Ladies and gentlemen, Dan Gote is not a believer. So he's not omnipresent, but yet he's here with us. It's just that we don't acknowledge his presence. I'm standing on Dangote. This place is built by Dangote. The, the sugar we gave, the ministers that came, is Dangote sugar. The food they ate was with Dangote salt. If they mixed macaroni or spaghetti in the food, it's Dangote. Ladies and gentlemen, as we are going on the road, we will ride on Dangote. When we get home, we will still meet Dangote. That's how the life of a believer should be. Yet it's not omnipresent. We have the Holy Spirit. We can spread. We can spread. Salvation is good. But to preserve salvation, it takes influence. Apostle Samuel was trying to say the Lord yesterday. To preserve it, it takes influence. You can get born again today. And the environment will make you lose it tomorrow. How many of you got born again before you, and the devil borrowed it and you came back to give God again? Almost everybody. Including Apostle Adiba. And you get born again again. You borrow it and say, Jesus, I'm, I gave you last year, but we need to quickly broker this deal. Because when this money comes, we'll come. I know that you are a good, um, good master, so you will listen to me. The environment can corrupt you to lose Jesus. There are many of you that if they put a gun on your head, 
If you ask yourself, what's the essence of this Jesus? What's the essence? <clears throat> At the face of death. But can we have salvation and still be well built by God that nothing on the earth can command us to bow to the earth? And that's where God is taking us to. There's a generation that is rising. God is mobilizing a generation that will take territories. And I'm glad that you're part of that generation. Glory be to God. Stand to your feet this morning. Shabbat Ketola. Lift up your hands to heaven. And just soak it in. Soak it in. And worship. Soak it in. And praise. Soak it in. And tongues. Just soak it in. And give him praise. You are a culture disruptor. You are a culture shaper. Shabakito si atalaba. God is giving you a tough skin. God is giving you a tough skin. Lekito rash tekoto. He's teaching you systems. He's teaching you structures. He's teaching you the next thing to do. He's teaching the next thing to dive into without being afraid. Without being afraid. Some of you have been fighting some decisions because of tradition. You've been fighting it a lot because of custom of men. Who is involved? What shall they say? What shall we for me? I came to deliver you today. Zekita paras kota lemba kato sekete. Zekete para come on suck it in, suck it in, suck it in, suck it in. Lembra do sta kata paras kato leda baya. Le kato brado sta kete lea. Embra kosta hara. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. Lift up your hands to heaven. Every religious spirit. That has not helped you to take the steps that you need to take in life. Every political spirit. Contaminating yeast. That has not made you to be free to do all God has called you to do. Today. We bring them under condemnation. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit of fear. We cast it out right now in the name of Jesus. That spirit that cannot help you to take risk, to go for proper funding in what you do, for you to make moves on your, on your assignment, for you to go all out, to make progress. There's always something pushing you for backward in the name of the Lord. We condemn that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Today I speak to your realm. Be free. I speak to the deepest portion of your conviction. Be free. Anyone under any attack of condemnation. Attack of condemnation always. Today, I declare your freedom in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We give you all the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Territory breakers are rule breakers. Territory breakers are culture disruptors. Territory, territory, territory takers are people who build systems. And that's the emerging generation. The old cannot fight it. The new has come to stay. And God is raising you for such a time as this. Have you been blessed? Put your hands together for the Lord. And give him a praise this morning.